All right, we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. Um, so hopefully you are finished with lunch, because this is going to be a very interactive workshop. It's going to involve implementing most of the rest of your server, uh, and specifically the API. So Aaron just gave you a quick introduction to server.js, uh, and you guys hopefully walk through all of that and learn how that works. Uh, and today we're going to, or in this workshop, we're going to finish up building the API so that your cat book will be fully functioning, fully on your computer, on your server alone, without using any other service. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I want to introduce is this idea of app versus router. So in Aaron's workshop, just before lunch, you probably saw a lot of app.use. And then for our route that we used, we used app.get. Uh, and when we did that, if you guys can remember what it did, it essentially just added a new function to the server at that get address or you know, whoever you set that use to. So we did our app.get slash API slash test or something like that, then we were able to tell the server what to respond when it gets a request to that URL. So there's also something called a router in Express. Uh, so what a router does is it allows you to essentialize, essentially modularize, or if you don't know what that means, just sort of simplify your application into little parts. So if you don't want to put every single thing needed onto your app, because your server.js would just end up in app.use, app.get, and we get really, really long quickly. We have something called a router that allows us to uh, sort of break that into pieces. So as it says, server.js is already like 60 lines long or something like that, and it doesn't really do anything useful yet other than just serve our main files. So we're going to break off from our app, which represents our overall web application. We're going to break off a single router. And the way to think of a router is an isolated group of API endpoints. So it's sort of like a mini application. In our cat book example, slash API is going to be represented by a single router. And everything that ends starts with slash API, like slash API slash comments, or slash API slash stories, is going to be redirected to a single router. Uh, so I think Aaron covered this, but in case you guys just sort of Free cap, an API endpoint is a part of the server that performs some specific function. So we coded uh, one example endpoint in Aaron's workshop. Uh, and then API route just refers to the name that that endpoint is put at. So slash API slash stories is just the, the route that reads that endpoint. I'll probably use the words route and endpoint pretty interchangeably uh, because effectively they mean the same thing. There's a one to one mapping in our server. One endpoint has one route. Cool. So for workshop four, what we're going to do, uh, your cat bug code, as we've mentioned, has been making requests to the staff server. Uh, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to implement your own server so that it makes all of the requests to like within your computer. And you can affect how it responds to requests, et cetera. Cool. So if everyone can open up your laptops and open up the api.js file uh, that's in your server directory of uh, cat bug. So hopefully you still have this stuff open from Aaron's workshop, and you can just open up your VS Code or whatever text editor you're using, and open up API.js. Um, let's see. Yeah. Where did the checkout slide go? OK, cool. I thought there was a checkout slide, but it seems to be missing. Cool. <laughs> what you're going to want to do is run git checkout workshop 4 dash starter. I'll just type this up here. <coughs> so if you're in your cat book, and just in case you made any changes, you can always reset. And this will reset all of your code. And then we're going to get checked out workshop 4 dash starter. Cool. And then if you open up your uh, files here, you should see your server.js that Aaron showed in the work his workshop. Uh, all of that same stuff with that test API route, slash API slash test. And then there's going to be a new file called api.js, and it's pretty much empty at this point. Cool. Hopefully everyone's there now. 
Okay, we're gonna do a couple things in this file. So first thing we're gonna do is create the router. So like I mentioned, we're going to break off from the overall application a single router. And the way we do that is with this syntax here, const router equals express.router. And so that's just a built-in function in express. And since we already imported express here, we can call router and that will create a new router for us to use. So remember, we can put that line uh, at the bottom here, api.js. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is set our module.exports equal to router. And this is pretty much, you guys have already seen this a couple times, but when another file imports this file, router is now what it's going to export. Uh, so you'll see in a second, if we import, if we require api.js from another file, then what we want it to return is the router, the mini application that we're creating. Slash API. Any questions so far? Cool. <laughs> oh, yes. What's the difference between doing this and the like export default thing? So uh, the default is it's what I think Aaron explained this earlier, but basically default is what happens when you just require and then you don't need the phrases. It's okay, you, dude. For server code, you're just always going to see module.exports, and the kind of default keyword is something that is front end. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is a, it actually has to do with the way that we import files. Since we're using require here instead of import, it's like a slightly different syntax. Uh, you're just going to use the module.exports. Cool. Any other questions before we move on? So the next thing we're going to do is open up our server.js again. So that's the file that you had open for Aaron's workshop. And sort of somewhere towards the top before we make our app, we're just going to require our api.js file. And so what this does is since we just, from here we exported it, and here we're going to import it using require. So we exported that file from, uh, from api.js and we're going to import it into server.js. Everyone can add this line here. You will then be able to access your router that we just created from server.js. <clears throat> so the next step that we're going to do take here is we're going to tell the server where this new router should be put, basically. So what this is gonna look like is down below, after we've created our app, so here we server code from before, we import our API, we create the app, and then down here, we're going to app.use slash API, and then API. So what that essentially does is it tells Express to put the router that we just created in API.js, and then import it as API, at the route slash API. So any request that comes to your server that goes to slash API slash something is going to go to our new router in API.js as just slash something without the slash API included. So we now attach the mini application or a router at slash API. All right, can people raise their hands if they're still working on this? Everyone got this? Okay. Any questions? Pretty straightforward so far. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move our route into API.js. So you guys made that test route with Aaron that uh, said app.get slash API slash test, and it just returned something like it works or something like that. Uh, we can now move that into our API.js file. So if you guys can just copy and paste that into api.js, that will be our first step here. And once you've done copying and pasting that in, we don't need it in server.js anymore, so you can delete it from there. And then we'll have to make a couple changes in api.js to make sure this matches our, our API syntax. So first thing, instead of app.get, we're actually going to change it to router.get. And this is because instead of working with the overall app in API.js, we're just working with the router. 
So just things that start with slash API. And because we're only working with those routes, things that start with slash API, we can actually delete the slash API part and just have slash test there. Cool. So what your code should end up looking like in API.js is something like this, where you have router.get slash test, and then it should respond with it works. And if you have your, your NPM start and NPM run hot loader still running from earlier, uh, from Aaron's workshop, you should still be able to go to your browser and go to localhost, uh, I think it's 3000 slash API slash test, and you should get the exact same response. So if you don't have NPM start running already, you can go do that and check to make sure that localhost 3000 slash API slash test responds with something like it works. Cool. Any questions so far? So what we've done now is we've moved everything for our API into a single file, and that allows us to focus just on the API. OK, so if everyone can run git reset hard and check out workshop four, step one. Even if you're following along, this step will add a couple new things for you. So everyone, go ahead and run these commands in your 30 more seconds to do that. So now we're going to start working on the actual path of routes. Uh, does anyone remember the routes that we used yesterday uh, in Matt's lecture when we hooked up the front end? We made a bunch of GET requests and POST requests. Uh, does anyone remember what routes we used there? So we had slash API, slash a couple different things. Yeah. Slash B. Uh, I don't think we had slash feed one. We have, yeah. Slash comments and slash profiles. Yeah, so slash comments and slash stories are the ones we're going to implement first. Okay, cool. But first, we need to figure out how we're going to store our data. So you might have noticed if you checked out that new branch that we've got a new little variable at the top here that says let data equals this thing. So, can anyone tell me what is this thing? What what kind of what type of thing is it in JavaScript? Yeah, it's an object. I heard someone say it. So it's a JavaScript object, and we're using this to represent all of our data. And so data.stories is going to represent all of the stories we have, and then data.comments is going to represent all of the comments that people have posted on Kappa. Does that make sense, everyone? Cool. So, the first part we're going to do is implementing stories. <coughs> if you remember, first let's jump into, I think Aaron talked about this briefly, but let's go over it in slightly more detail. What are these things that we've been using in our routes called rec and res? So, rec, if you remember what Aaron pointed out, is our request and res is the response. So we use <coughs> res.send to respond to something with the server. So rec is the incoming request, and it might have parameters such as rec.query. In the case that we're making get requests, it will have rec.query, and things like rec.query.id will contain whatever the get request sent as the ID parameter. When you're making a post request, instead we're gonna look at body instead of query. Uh, and this is just, we, we don't need to worry about too much about why that is, but for, for our purposes here, we'll look at query for get requests and body for post requests. And then res is our server response. So things like res.send, and I think you guys also saw in the error handling code, something like res.status, which sends back one of our HTTP status codes uh, that we learned about in Noah's workshop. Cool. So first we're going to implement get slash API slash stories. So what does this router need to do? It's pretty straightforward. It just needs to send back all the stories to the front end, right? So how can we access all the stories? And we just talked about this with data. It's just going to be data.stories. 
So you can probably imagine it's actually going to end up to be pretty simple to implement our get on slash API slash stories. We're just going to res.send data.stories. And that's just going to send back all of the stories. It looks pretty similar to our test route, except instead of sending out a constant string, we're just sending back a piece of data. So I'll give you guys a minute to get that in there. Can you raise your hand if you're finished with putting this in? On to the second part, which is comments. So slash API slash comments was pretty similar to this last one, uh, at least conceptually speaking. Uh, if you remember from yesterday, we made a get request to slash API slash comment. I think it got a little bit rushed toward the end, but we should have been making get request to slash API slash comment. And we fed it in one little argument, uh, parent this.cross.id. So the goal of this argument was to tell the server which host we need comments from, right? So we need comments that have the parent host of this ID number. And then once those got returned in our front end, we would then set our state with comments equal to comments. Uh, whatever gets returned. So on the server side, what we need to do then <coughs> is first figure out what story we need the comments from, and then filter out only the comments that are children of that story. And then we need to send those back to the front end. So the server is going to take a look at our data, figure out what comments need to get to go to the front end, given the request, and then send them back. So what this is going to look like, we're going to look at our rep.query, if you guys remember. Uh, rec.query contains the parameters from that were made with the get request. And then uh, I'm over this and let you guys give it a try. So now it's your turn. Add an API rep that correctly responds to get request to slash API slash comments. We know what it needs to do. Um, and it's going to look a lot like slash API slash stories, but with a little bit more logic to figure out which ones to return. Because we don't want to return all of them for every post. We only want to return the comments for that specific post. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes to go ahead and try that out.
once you think you have something working for this, or at least something close to working, you can run npm start and npm run hot loader. Remember, those are our two commands to get our web development going. And then visit localhost 5000 in your, in your browser. We should see stories popping up from our stories route that we implemented earlier, just now. Uh, and if you've gotten your comments route to work, then you should see a single comment show up as well. Even though, <laughs> can I ask a question? Yes? When you are running uh, server code, um, how do you put that in? Or like, is there a, like a console.log? Yes, so console.log will still work on the server, okay. um, except that instead of logging it in your like dev tools browser console, it's going to get logged in the terminal window where you ran npm start. So you can, yeah, you can see things that get logged there. Um, small mistake, <laughs> this should say slash API slash comment, singular, not slash API slash comments, so you can make your route point to that, since your front end calls to slash API slash comment, even though it returns multiple comments. And if you're stuck on figuring out how to uh, exactly figure out which comments to return, you might want to remember the array.filter syntax that Matt talked about in his lecture on Tuesday. Uh, and the way that works is you give it an array, filter, and then you can tell it which, which condition on which to return an item. And that will give you a new array. Can you raise your hand if you've gotten this working? <laughs> okay, is anyone confused about what we're working on right now? Any questions? Yes. Okay. We should be adding a new uh, get route to our server. So just like our get to slash API slash stories, we should be adding a new one that will respond to a get request to slash API slash comment instead of stories. And it's going to return the comments for a single post. Respond to the get request that were made from our front end yesterday afternoon.
does this do nothing? <laughs> you guys are still stuck. Then we can remember that our ID parameter is going to be contained in rec.query when we make a callback on our on our rep. Since we sent it from the front end. We can use the filter function to filter out only the ones that we want. And then we're going to use res.send to send a response back to the front end. Just like our other ones. Well, like if you make a new one, does it come here? No. 
Okay. Is this valid code? <laughs> <laughs> Every room has outlets. Okay. Yeah. So, do you understand what our general goal is? Put comments under the stories. Yes, but so how do would we accomplish this? Um, if we get the comments from and we would get the story. and we would get the comments how um, by by making it by doing a rec a, a, a get request a get request by doing a get request. So and we we know where we have to make the get request to. Um, so, so, uh, yes, and so, we're making a get request to our helio, and, um, uh, I don't think we have our syntax right here. Probably not. So, I'm going to open this up. Take things line by line because I'm too dead to like put more than three brain cells towards this. That's assuming I have more than three brain cells. Okay, but um, uh, so Yes, in api.js, we get a comment. Now, don't worry quite as much because we're, we are, uh, don't worry about the filter thing because this is just the complete version of the But, uh, so, what we're worried Don't worry about the, the, the filter bits per se. I don't think that's what we're worried about. Yeah. Between, oh, yeah, actually, we do have to filter. Okay. Um, figure out which. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So, I wasn't paying attention when he was talking, so I was. So yeah, uh, what we're talking about is we need to filter the comments that we've received based on the comments parent being equal to our requests parent. Does that make sense? The comments parent needs to be equal to 
So we, when we made our request, we sent along with it in our crew. We, we gave some extra information. In the request. So request has a field uh, that also has another field within it. And uh, so that parent just is a number and I do that associates it with with so back here this big box right here has some form of number associated. Uh, so showing those I live for you. We're gonna send that ID and we'll just call it one. And so every uh, because if we had more than one story, we want only the comments of this story to appear under this one and not this one. Um, and so, and then we get a response and we send it to the comments. Sorry, I have a negative two points. <laughs> Scattered all over the place. Now let's see if we can help out without cheating. Okay. Single story has a bunch of comments associated with it. 
And we sent on the front end in rec.query.parent, we sent the ID of the story that we wanted to look for the comments for. So with this code right here, what this is doing is it's using the filter function on JavaScript arrays to look at each comment, check and see, look at each comment in our data, check and see if that comment has a parent that we're looking for, and then we're going to return those with res.send filtered comments. Okay, so for the sake of time, if you don't already have that figured out or all completed, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get reset hard, and then get checked out. Workshop four, step, I think we're on step two now. run these commands. And we should all be back on the same page where the code looks like this. So we get the filtered comments with this code right here, and then we respond to those filtered comments right here. Any questions about that? I know it's a little bit complicated, uh, but we're just looking at our data, figuring out which one to return, and then return. So in that case, you should be able to run npm start and npm run hot loader, as we always do to do our web development, and then check localhost 5000. And you should see a single post from our data object that we defined at the top, and a single comment also from that data object we defined at the top. And if we try to write a new comment, and we hit submit on that new comment, if you happen to have your browser dev tools open, as I tend to a lot of times, you will see this little post 404 not found. And you can probably imagine why this is, because we've not implemented post requests to our server yet. So, this is that. The next thing we want to do is implement our post requests. So if everyone can have the same page here. And there is one additional piece of code, uh, if you check out where we're <coughs> for step two, that you haven't seen yet. <coughs> and that's this piece of code at the bottom here. It says router.all star. And you guys might remember from uh, the error handling part of Aaron's lecture that if you do star, that's just telling it to do it for any route. The asterisk represents anything that can come in. And we're going to console log that the API route was not found and then send back a 404. Meaning that that page or that API route just wasn't found with a helpful message that the API route was not found. Cool. And if you remember from our lovely question earlier, this console.log is actually going to show up in the terminal where we ran npm start because that's where we we're running our server code. So anytime you send something to that doesn't exist, it will pass over all the stuff above it because it express sees that it doesn't match any of those routes. It will get down to this one at the bottom, and this is our fallback route. Cool. Any questions about how that works or the get request so far? Anything in this lecture? All right. So the next thing we need to do is implement post requests. And if we remember from new post input.js, which is something we worked on yesterday, we made post requests to the same route, but instead of a get request, we're making a post request now. And we gave it a body where the body was parent and the parent post that we're giving it, and then the content with the value being the content of the content that we want to be posting to Catholic, right? So now we need to handle this on the back end side, on the server side. And this is an example of what that comment looked like. Parent zero, content, I want to write a new comment two, meaning that the parent post is that zero. Okay, so quick aside, like I mentioned earlier, we've got ref.query and ref.body. 
when we're doing get requests, we're going to use rec.query. So for example, rec.query.parent was the one we just used <coughs> in the code on the previous couple slides. And then for post requests, information is going to come in in the body instead. So rec.body.content and rec.body.id are going to be where this information is going to be contained when we write these next couple reps. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We'll implement the stories rep together, and then I'll let you guys try to implement the comments rep on your own. So what do our post endpoints need to, need to handle? First, they need to figure out what data needs to be saved, put it in some sort of structure, and then add it to our data object. Right? Pretty straightforward, it's not too bad. And so the way we're gonna put it in a unified structure is like this. We have a new story, we need to compute a new ID for that story. In this case, we're just going to use data.stories.length because that's going to be implemented every single time that we add a new story to it. Uh, so if there's zero stories, then the length is going to be zero, and the ID will be zero. If there's already one story, then the ID will be set to one, etc. For creator name, for now we're just hard coding my name, and you should see a my name variable at the top of your API.js file to read the that if you'd like. It doesn't really matter right now. Once we implement login, and that's tomorrow, then uh, you'll be able to put in a real name there. And then content being the rec.body.content was came with your post request, right? So here it is. Here's the post for slash API slash store. When the front end sends a request to this route, we want to respond, or sorry, we want to put it in this unified structure, this new story structure, with an ID, a creator name, and content. So every new story is going to have those three fields on it. Then we're going to use the push syntax, and if you guys remember from the JavaScript lecture, that just adds it to an array. So since we've got data.stories as an array of stories, we'll push this new story onto that array. And then we're going to respond by just sending the story back. And the reason we do that is to just, number one, tell the server, or tell the front end, oh, we finished posting this, this story. So, can go ahead and do your thing now, you don't need to worry about this anymore. And then the second reason we send it back <coughs> is so that it can be displayed immediately upon posting. So this allows the front end to, when, when the story's finished posting, just display it. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes to get this typed in. While you're working on that, are there any questions about anything in this, <coughs> on this slide? <coughs> Questions about how post requests and express work. Raise your hand if you're finished putting this in. Thirty more seconds. Once you've got this in correctly, you should be able to now go back to your browser, go to localhost 5000, and if you've still got your hot loader and server running in your terminals, then you should be able to post new stories, and they should show up in your feed when you post a new story. So if you're running into issues, getting this working, feel free to raise your hand. Stop. Cool. 
So now that we've handled posting a story, the next step, and if you didn't finish getting that in, you can just go check the slides. I think the slides are posted. Well, it's the slide down below type. So the second part, we're going to implement comments. And this is going to be pretty similar, but I'll let you guys do this on your own. We're going to add an API route that we want to correctly handle post requests to slash API slash comment. So that means when some, someone posts a new comment, we want to handle that by doing a couple things. Just putting it in a unified structure like before, adding it to our data, in this case data.comments, so data.stories, and then returning it with res.send, just like every request that we get. Any questions about what we're implementing here? So we're adding one more post request route to our server uh, to handle comments now. And one quick side note, uh, we want to make sure that all of this stuff, these post things, are put above in our code, uh, above the error handling code. Because our error handling code, if you remember, it catches everything. So if you put it, the error handling code above anything, nothing will end up getting to that code. So make sure the error handler should be at the very bottom of your code. Cool. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to go ahead and try to implement slash API slash comment. And as always, feel free to raise your hand if you run into issues. Yes, stop.
methods to story and comment, both working. You can successfully post comments and stories to Catbook. Woohoo! Awesome. Alright, it looks like a good chunk of the class has that finished, so I'm just going to move on for now so we're running short of time. So if you didn't quite finish the uh, post to API comment, this is what the solution ends up looking like. We create a new comment object which just has an ID, a reader name, a parent, and it's a content. And notice that we get our parent and content from rep.body instead of rep.query. And it's because we're handling a post request here rather than a get request. Get requests are going to use rep.query, post requests are going to use rep.body. And since we sent in the arguments parent and content, we can access those here. We're going to add the new comments to our data structure, and then we're going to respond with that new comment. Any questions about how this works? Cool. So you can run one last test, and if you run npm start, npm run hot, hot loader, load for those 5,000, you should now be able to post <laughs> comments and stories to your capital, which is exciting. All right. So what's next, now that we have this finished? If you didn't quite get those typed in or finished, uh, feel free to git checkout workshop 4-complete, <laughs> and you should be able to test it out, workshop 4-complete. So if you do that, and you go ahead and change something in server.js, or something change something in api.js, or you, for some reason, stop your server and then restart your server, then you'll notice that all of the new posts and comments that you just created are now completely gone. Uh, and the reason for this is because data is only defined at the top of our server file. So every time you restart the server, you actually end up rerunning that server file and you redefine the data to be the default things that we gave you initially. And so our new comments, new posts, only last as long as the server stays running. Cool, and that will lead you into the next lecture, which is on introduction to databases.